Hello, I'm Dr. Randall Seacrest, your host for eOrthopod TV. Today I have with me Dr. Nitin Bhatia. Dr. Bhatia is a spine surgeon who is the chief of spine surgery at University of California, Irvine. Dr. Bhatia did his undergraduate training at Stanford. He then went on to Baylor College of Medicine where he completed his MD degree. From there, he did orthopedic surgery training at UCLA. From there, he finished a, a spine fellowship at the University of Miami. Today, he practices complex spine surgery at University of California, Irvine. Good day, Dr. Bhatia. Thank you for having me. Dr. Bhatia, what I would like to sort of spend the next few minutes discussing is your general philosophy about low back pain. This is a condition that is, is epidemic in the United States. 85% of us, of the population, is going to have low back pain, an episode of disabling low back pain at some point in their lives. We're all going to get this for, for the most part. Tell me what you tell patients when they call or they come in and they're concerned that their back pain is a serious problem and, and they don't know. They just, they're having their first episode of back pain. How do you as an orthopedic spine surgeon approach that patient and try to take them through this, this uh, evaluation and treatment plan? Well, I'm glad you ask. This, unfortunately, is an extremely difficult problem to diagnose and treat. And it occurs to almost everybody. As you mentioned, 85% of the U.S. population will be afflicted with back pain. Every year, 15% of the population ends up seeing their doctors because of back pain. It's actually the second most common cause of visits to a doctor or visits to a medical specialist behind only the common cold or flu. And it costs the U.S. in the upwards of almost $100 billion a year in lost work productivity as well as uh, medical care. So why is it so common and what do we do about it? People come to me all the time saying, boy, my back hurts and it's so bad that I can't do things I want to do. And unfortunately, uh, it is one of the hardest things to diagnose and treat. It's even harder than, say, a huge disc herniation or spinal stenosis, mainly because it's hard to figure out what's causing the pain. Well, and, and you're right, and I think it's, it's so frustrating for patients. Uh, any of us that have had episodes of back pain understand this is a very real thing. I mean, it's there, it hurts, and you want to get rid of it. And you tend to get very um, excited about it when it occurs to you because this may be the first time you've really had anything bad that you say, this is disabling, I can't live with this. So it, it, I think all of us know it's very real. When, when you see that patient who comes in and says, I've got back pain and I think it's really bad, how do you counsel them? Do you immediately go and begin um, getting x-rays, MRI scans, all of these tests, or is, is there something that we should be doing before we do all those things? Well, the first thing we want to do is sit down and talk with the patient and see how the back pain started and how long it's been going on, as well as the quality of the back pain. So some of the things to really get an idea of is what started the back pain. You know, I see people all the time who for the weekend went out and decided to play sports and garden in the backyard and move furniture and guess what their back hurts but we have a very clear picture of what caused it and probably for those people with short term or what we call acute back pain you don't even need x-rays really just a good course of anti-inflammatories and therapy and maybe rest for a day or two can help them a lot more troubling is the person who says you know what I've had this back pain for three months or six months and it keeps on going, it doesn't seem to get better, what do we do with them? And frequently for them, because now it's been going on for at least six weeks or longer, we do get x-rays to make sure there's nothing else more serious going on. Some of the warning signs that we talk about, that it could be something more serious, even like a tumor or a fracture or an infection, are pain, is pain that's constant, that occurs no matter what activity you're doing, whether lying down, sitting, standing, exercising and pain that occurs at night all the time and wakes people up or stops people from sleeping. Those are a couple of the real warning signs that in the very small percentage of patients who have something more serious going on can tip us off that there is something significant. Now, you mentioned um, that you get x-rays sometimes, but that, that if you feel like there's not anything to warrant x-rays, you don't get them. So if, if I'm a patient and I go to my doctor, my primary care physician, or I go to a, an emergency room or a now care and I'm complaining of back pain and they don't order x-rays, that's no reason to be alarmed. Correct. We should not demand x-rays or anything like that. 
Correct. And what about MRI scans? I mean, we, you know, it's almost today that if you say you've got a pain, you're going to get an MRI scan right. of that area. Right. What about back pain? Well, uh, you know, an MRI scan, one of the problems with getting MRI scans is that they're very good tests. And we see problems in the back or anywhere in the spine that may or may not be causing the pain. So if you get an MRI scan of 100 people who are completely asymptomatic, probably at least 50% of them, if not more, will have abnormalities on the MRI scan, but these people have no pain. What we don't want to do is start ordering tests and then saying, oh, this is the cause of your pain, so we need to fix that problem. Now, one thing I want to be somewhat specific about is that when we're talking about back pain in this conversation, I'm really talking about pain just in the low back. I'm not talking about pain that's shooting down the legs or sciatica or numbness or weakness in the legs because that's more of a what we call radiculopathy. And those patients probably do warrant an MRI scan. But for the patients with the isolated pain in the low back, which is a very common problem, probably an MRI scan is not something that we obtain very early in the problem. Mm. You know, it's interesting because I, I think that I see a lot of patients with back pain and and I have this sort of routine that I go through when they first come in and, and, and we talk with them. And one of the things that I tell them that's always a shock to them is that I tell them, you have back pain. You have, we've done some x-rays perhaps. I've done a physical exam. I've listened to the history. And the statistics show that in 85% of the cases, I don't know what's causing your pain. Yeah. And only 15% of the cases, even if I get an MRI scan, do I really know unequivocally for sure that I've found the problem of your back pain. And that may be too much. Right. Patients are flabbergasted when I tell them that. And they think that physicians should have the answer and know exactly what's causing their pain. Now, one of the problems I see is that I don't think that we have, as physicians, a good idea of the structures that are actually causing the pain. We make guesses, and unfortunately, we tell patients our guesses, and they take it for real. So let's drop back a, a, a one step and tell me your philosophy in terms of locating that pain generator. One aspect of that is, is this whole concept of the muscle strain. And you mentioned the person who goes out over the weekend and, and really roughs himself up um, and has back pain. I mean, a lot of people would just say that, well, that's a muscle strain or, or the back strain. We don't really know what we're talking about, but we, we say that. Um, What's your vision of the, the, the sources or the pain generators in the back? When you think about the back and you're trying to figure out what's causing this pain, what structures are you thinking are most likely to cause pain? Well, you know, I, I think what you just talked about is extremely important. You know, I see patients who come in who are wheelchair-bound because of problems with their spinal cord, and we can fix them and make them walk again. But we get people who come in and say, I have back pain, and we can't fix them and we can't even figure out where the pain is coming from. And the reason that it's so difficult is that any structure in the back can cause back pain, whether it's the bones, the discs, the facet joints, which are the joints in the back uh, of the spine, the muscles, the ligaments, uh, can all cause pain that the body interprets in the same way. And so the patient can't come in and say, you know what, doctor, my disc at lumbar 4-5, lumbar, uh, lumbar 4-5 is hurting me. They just say, I have pain in this general area. But not only can that disc cause that pain, but the facet joints and the muscles and the ligaments, it's all interpreted the same way by the brain. And our tests frequently don't show where the problem is. Even MRI scans, which are great tests, don't very well show problems with muscles or muscle strains or ligamentous or tendinous injuries in the spine. And people, uh, patients ask me all the time, but the test is so good, you know, an MRI scan. And it is, it's a great test. But in 10 years, we're going to have tests that make MRI scans look ancient. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as good as our technology is, it's not perfect, and it can't provide all the answers. You know, it's interesting, too. I think one of the disservices we do for patients, and I think some of it is our communication uh, or lack of communication, when we tell that patient, we don't see anything on their MRI scan. We don't see anything on their CAT scan. We don't see the cause of their pain. They interpret that to mean that we don't believe they have pain. And that's probably not, that's not what I mean usually. What it usually means is that 
I'm sorry, you're falling that 85% category that has nonspecific back pain, and I don't know what's causing your pain. And we can treat you with a, a fairly good uh, protocol that has been developed by experience that we know most people get better if they just stick with this. But we still don't know what was causing the pain. We don't know what made it go away. We just know that we, in a statistically significant number of patients, we can make the pain go away. Exactly. And that's really one of the frustrating things for these patients is they come in with back pain and they figure with, you know, uh, uh, maybe x-rays and maybe an MRI scan, we can make the diagnosis. But for the vast majority of them, we can't. And I think a lot of the patients end up being pushed from doctor to doctor to doctor saying, there's nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong. And now they're in pain and they're frustrated. And it's emotionally hard because these people want to get back to their normal life and exercise and work, but no one's been able to give them an answer. And I think it is very important for us as orthopedic surgeons to let the patients know, we, we know that the pain is real, but just that the tests aren't good enough to show where it's coming from. And, and we are the patient's advocate. And we will work with them through a treatment algorithm to hopefully get them better. Well, and the other trap here, and I think that you and I think, think alike on this, but the patient is frustrated and they just want something fixed. Mm -hmm. So the old adage of don't just stand there, do something. And it's hard to convince patients that sometimes the right thing is don't just do something, stand there, right. because we don't want to do something wrong. And they ask us, well, why don't you do exploratory surgery? Why don't you do this type of surgery? I'm willing for you to do anything. Why don't you just do something and see if it works? Right. I don't think that's a very good idea, and I don't know how you feel about that. You know what, I, I agree. Spine surgery works wonderfully well. Uh, success rates in the 90 percentiles, and uh, if we know what's causing the pain, if we identify the pain generator, once we have it identified, our modern techniques are safe, fast, reliable, they work extremely well. The hard part about back pain is it's very difficult to truly identify the pain generator. And we have a variety of tests that work okay, including tests like a discogram or you know, even the MRI scan for this problem only work okay. And so the results of any sort of surgery probably are only okay, unless you can really identify that pain generator very uh, confidently. Well, let's, let's step back and try to take some principles away from this so that patients can really understand how folks like you and I think about this and what we would do for ourselves if, if we were faced with, with back pain that, that's lasted for six months and we're still frustrated. We can't quite be as active as we want, uh, but we don't know what's causing the pain. I doubt either you or I would jump up and ask for an operation. Absolutely not. What would we do? Well, the fundamental treatment for this is exercise, physical therapy, and muscle rehabilitation. So the goal is to create a stabilizing internal brace by strengthening our core muscles, our abdominal muscles and our low back muscles that become stronger and can help prevent pain in the low back. As we've talked about before, muscle strain is a very common cause of low back pain. And we get muscle strain and even problems in the bones, discs and joints frequently because there's either abnormal force applied to normal strength or probably more commonly in, normal, in, in modern society, we're not quite as strong as we should be. You know, our, our jobs no longer are to be hunting and gathering like they were a thousand years ago. We sit at a desk, we drive in a car, we, we sit at home on the chair or the couch. So most of us, and myself included, aren't doing the kind of exercise that we probably should be. And the muscles get a little weaker. So now we apply a force to them, whether it's from gardening or or, or exercise or whatever it may be, maybe even just normal everyday forces, and those muscles start to spasm and cause pain. So if we can make the muscles stronger, we can not only help them heal from this episode, but we can prevent future episodes, which is critically important. Yeah, I would agree. I think that one of the big problems is, you know, there, there's this standard sort of belief that all acute back pain, 95% of it gets better in six weeks, no matter what you do, whether you treat it or not. What the, the follow-on to that, though, is that, is that most back pain is recurrent. So 90% of those folks are going to have another episode. And the best you can do is probably reduce the number of those episodes. The other thing that you brought up, the whole hunter, hunting and gathering and strength, 
a lot of people think about physical therapy and back rehab as a strengthening process. I think it's also critical that people understand how much those hunter and, hunting and gathering people moved. They had activity. And it wasn't just strength, but it was movement as well. So part of the whole physical therapy thing is to get people active. Brings up a concept of fear avoidance behavior. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a, a, a critical thing for people to understand. If we hurt, if we think we're going to hurt, and we stop moving, we're going to hurt more. And you have to sort of get past that and not stop doing things because you fear to do them. And that's a critical piece that physical therapy can help us overcome and get us back moving. Exactly. And that's why, you know, patients will come to me and say, boy, I've got back pain. And we talk about an everyday exercise program that, that, that I have all my patients start at home. And they say, oh, I don't need to go to the physical therapist. But I think it is very important to work with the therapists, at least in the short term, so they can reteach the patients how to move. And then it's okay to move and go back to normal yes. activity. And once they believe that, and sometimes it only takes a few sessions, sometimes it takes a little longer, they can do everyday activity and exercise on their own. But for people who, whose back pain has gotten bad enough where they end up in my office or in their primary care doctor's office, this is a lifetime, uh, this is a life change. Every morning you have to wake up and do some activity and exercise. Every day it's something that you have to make part of your regular routine, like brushing your teeth, or the pain will recur. Yeah, I agree. Let's talk a little bit about surgical decision making and, and because some people it is appropriate. We have found the pain generator and it is appropriate for them to consider surgery. When do you begin to, to counsel patients that perhaps they are better off with surgery? And what I'm really looking at here is principles. You know, what sorts of things do you say, now's the time for you to consider surgery? Well, I, I think the very important thing is you have to confidently identify the pain generator. And, that, and that's not just a dark disc on an MRI scan because everybody gets dark discs. It's a very high, it's, it's a very identifiable cause of pain. And then it has to be affecting the patient's life significantly. And finally, the pain that's coming has to be relayed back to that first identified cause. Um, once the patient has significant pain from an identified pain generator, then they probably are a surgical candidate. Now, fortunately, usually back pain is not associated with significant nerve problems or risk of paralysis or anything like this. So surgery is essentially elective if it is needed at all. So if the patient's quality of life gets bad enough and they have a significant lesion or a significant problem that can be treated with surgery, then they probably are a surgeon, surgical candidate. You know, it's interesting because I think a lot of people come to us thinking, I have back pain, I've had back pain for three months, I need surgery. I mean, I'm doomed to have surgery. How many patients with back pain, the percentage-wise, do you really think need surgery? Oh, very, very low. I mean, in my practice, less than 1%. Yeah, so less than 1 in 100 patients that you and I see really uh, have to have surgery and need surgery and, and are better off with surgery. Exactly. 99% are probably better off Without treating it, it conservatively. That's well, I think, I think we're definitely on the same page with that. Any other comments or any other things about back pain that you feel like patients need to know when they're faced with back pain and are trying to make decisions about what's appropriate? What should, I, should I be worried? Should I go see a doctor? Should I consider surgery? Well, yeah, I think for the patients who are having pain that's ongoing and not getting better, I think it's reasonable to see a doctor, especially their primary care doctor, and then get involved in the team approach towards it. So frequently this approach is headed by their primary physician with physiatrists or pain management doctors, physical therapists, and possibly a surgeon involved to try to make sure they get appropriate treatment. Fortunately, with this team approach, and with a lifelong commitment to rehab of the muscles and an exercise program, the vast majority of patients don't require any surgery and can live a essentially pain-free life. But it does take work on the patient's part. They have to be willing to commit to that exercise program. They have to be willing to commit to putting their own time in. For the rare patient who does have one really, really bad level and everything else looks great and we can really identify where it's coming from, they, are, they do have successful surgery but it's a very, very small percentage, and I would tell most patients who have back pain, 
probably the best treatment is conservative care. So really, if I could summarize, most people don't need surgery. Most back pain probably will get, get better on its own. That doesn't mean you need, don't need to do anything. That means that you need to use it as a wake-up call and understand that you can do some preventative things. Back pain that, that, that is, is worrisome is those things that you talked about, the red flags. Pain at night, pain that doesn't go away. And then I think we also need to talk about nerve, you know, nerve injury. If, if you've got any sort of weakness, numbness, um, bowel or bladder complaints, that's a reason to be concerned. But if it's just back pain and you don't have any of those things, you can probably expect that you won't need surgery, but that you probably ought to get busy on your health and get a good program and expect it to improve your situation. I think Is that that's accurate? well summarized. Okay. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Thanks for watching today. If you have questions about the topic that we discussed today or any orthopedic topic, be sure to visit eorthopod.com. And if you're an orthopedic surgeon or healthcare provider interested in participating as a guest on eorthopod TV, you'll also find instructions on how to apply to become a guest on eorthopod TV. Thanks for watching.